welcome everybody. In this video, we're going to take a look at Null Mixer. And it's actually going to be the first of two parts, just so that it doesn't get to, the videos don't get too lengthy. Um, where in this first part, we'll take a look at just kind of the multiple stages that it operates in. Then the second part, we'll unpack the main, uh, let's call it uh, the main dropper. And, um, and that will pretty much be it. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, for our sample today, you can see the hash. I'll make sure to share that in the video description if you want to follow along. You can find that here on Triage, of course. Uh, it's also available on the Malware Bazaar. And you can see it's been detonated a handful of times here. And something that's interesting about uh, you know malware droppers such as this is that it brings with it quite a bit of noise, quite a few different samples. So you can see there are other families here, private loader, red line, smoke loader. Um, there's AS pack, which we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, if we kind of drill down and take a look, we're going to, of course, see uh, a number of different malware config extractions just because there are so many different families that get dropped. Um, do keep in mind this, uh, this family right here, the first malware config extraction null mixer and the C2 node, particularly the C2 node, R-A-Z-I-N-O.xyz. Now, you'll see that it can be a little hard sometimes based off of all of this activity to go, okay, well, what is this? Is it null mixer? Is it is it smoke loader? Is it VDAR? Is it all of the above? I, mean, I guess you could kind of say it's all of the above, but um, predominantly it is null mixer that is that is dropping everything else, and so that that can be a little hard to pick out. Um, before we get any further in just looking at some of the analysis data here and triage, um, any family that I'm not familiar with, and, and there's plenty of them out there, uh, I always just look for resources online. Um, this one is, you know, I, I don't think it has an extensive history, but it's been around for a little bit of time now, you know, so usually we have, you know, a number of research companies and independent researchers that will go ahead and, and get, get something written up and shared with the community. Um, in this case, Null Mixer is, there's several good write-ups out there. And, um, and, and part of why I, I do this, again, especially if I'm not familiar with the family, is so that I can ensure that I'm analyzing the right thing. If I think it's Null Mixer, um, then, and I can read a write-up, then I can look for these patterns, the IOCs and, and just the different behaviors to help me confirm or maybe um, you know, point, to, point out that it's maybe not, maybe it's a different thing. Um, and, and that's actually what happened to me when I first started digging into it. This I thought it was I was expecting private loader, um, didn't look like private loader, did a little bit of research, realized, oh, no, I'm actually looking at null mixer. But again, um, easy to do when you're when you're investigating a family for the first time. Um, aside from just using your favorite search engine, uh, Malpedia is also a very, very great resource. Uh, it's kind of like the Google Scholar of malware. And so you can go here and oftentimes you're going to find, you know, resources for the different families and or things that you're looking into. Uh, there was no null mixer, as you saw. There is private loader. Private loader isn't our target today, though. Um, and so I had to do a, a you know, a, a do a search with Malpedia, and then that brought uh, at least one article up. So, you know, backing it up and doing a Google search with uh, Malpedia null mixer. So sometimes there are some creative ways. Of course, we didn't need Malpedia to get that. But in the case where, you know, it has a particular family or, 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 or thing already tagged and categorized, then it can be a really big help. Uh, and you'll get a lot of different resources. Uh, so if we looked at, you know, private loader, right? Like here's a, here's a really nice set of resources. Um, okay. Well, let's get to the, oh, well, yeah, here, got to back up now. Um, so, you know, some things that are in this execution chain, you'll see things like the NSIS, null soft scriptable install system, and 7-zip archive. So that can help us to understand, of course, what we're looking at before um, before we start digging into code, using a debugger, you know, investigating with a sandbox. Um, so I almost always look, do an open source search and see what I can find. Now, if we come back to, to uh, triage and we look at the dynamic analysis, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna scroll down to the process activity, right? Because I want to, to do a little bit of a technical analysis here. So I'm interested in what, you know, what are the different sort of chains of execution? And we can see that our sample, this is where we're gonna start, um, there's a setup install, so the execution of the, the setup installer.exe, and then setup install.exe. And then this pattern of SOTEMA underscore 3.exe underscore 8.exe underscore 7.exe 
And if we you know, were to, to go and, and look, we would find that these processes, the, the primary, S-O-T-E-M-A underscore, that's, that's the actual malware that it's dropping. So we could, you could see that all here in the results of, of the triage analysis. Um, so that tells us something, right? When we start to see evidence of, the, of these files either being dropped to the file system or in an archive, certainly executed, then we know we found what's responsible for that. And it looks like, much like we saw in this article here, we're going to have a couple of stages of self-extracting archives in order to, um, before we get to the point where the main payloads are executed. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, we have our, our uh, SHA-2, just so I don't forget. Um, I will definitely get it added to the description, but every once in a while I forget. Uh, so this is just a good reference. One uh, of well, the first commands I'll run is the null, is just file on our actual um, you know, executable that we are investigating. And you'll see that in this case, the file utility actually gives us a pretty good heads up that yeah, we are dealing with the null soft installer self-extracting archive. Um, had we not, had file been you know not as helpful because file isn't always going to provide um, you know a, a, a more descriptive signature. Sometimes and oftentimes it's just going to say, "Oh, this is a PE file. Oh, it's an L file. Oh, it's a you know it's just data." We can use tools like Detect It Easy, and um, looking at primarily the use case here is the signatures. So there is the installer NSIS. It also identified that data for the NSIS data in the overlay. So. Uh, pretty clear indications from kind of both angles here that we're, we're dealing with the self-extracting or self-installing um, that we're dealing with the self-extracting installer. Now, fortunately, this has pretty much an easy button, and that is that we can use the 7-zip utility to extract that executable. And we should see that everything was extracted okay. And if we look at the... Um, the directory that we extracted to, there's our setup installer. So let's just get a, a SHA sum so that that's captured in the video. And there it is. Um, and let's do the file util utility on this. So this is what I was alluding to earlier. Um, we, we are anticipating that this is another self-extracting archive, but it's not quite so clear with the file utility. It's an executable, a PE file, that's no big surprise. Okay, if we take a look at this in Detected Easy, again, fairly robust signature set. If I was on a Windows machine, I would be either be using PE Studio or Detected Easy. I just happen to be in Remnix. And here we can see the, you know, the signature information, 7-zip, seven 7-zip. Seven um, and even if you look at the overlay, you can see not only, um, you know, that, that, that pattern that 7-zip must use. I haven't actually looked into it, but here it is. And with Detected Easy, you can, uh, the signatures are down here in the lower left-hand side. So you could look at the signature to see exactly what it matched on. Um, but it also tells us the execute file is setupinstall.exe. And we saw that, that behavior in the sandbox analysis that we looked at before we started pulling these files apart. So fortunately, uh, almost identical to the last, we can just use 7-zip to extract. The only difference is here, uh, let me make a temp directory. Oh, I guess I already have it there. So now we can extract our setup install to temp. Okay, and very similar. If all goes as planned and there's no nothing's password protected, uh, I did read that these are password protected. The samples I looked at, none of the stages of these archives were password protected. Then we should get a, you know, a successful extraction. So now we want to take a look at our temp directory, and we can see that not only do we find those files with that naming convention, S O T E M A underscore. There's our setup install.exe, and then there's a number of DLLs. So what about those text files? Well, those are all PE files. And that with those, um, those are the actual payloads. So now what's left is for the setup install to execute them. That doesn't really leave much to the imagination. If at this point all we were interested in was um, obtaining these these payloads that were being dropped, well, now we have them. 
So we can take a look at um, if you know a, a gathering additional information about the files. Uh, here I just generated the hash of those text files. Happened to grab the last one. And if we look at triage, it's there, um, although there isn't nearly as complete or comprehensive of tagging. So it might take a little bit of a deeper investigation. Very similar to the malware bazaar. It is uploaded because I did that. Um, and we can see that there are a number of different vendor detections, but I don't know, perhaps nothing that's uh, super concrete. Uh, so again, it might take a little bit more investigation, but that's you know kind of really up to you. At this point, we have the main samples that it's dropping, so you know we can look into that. Um, of course, the original execution that we saw in triage, we could also go back there and let's see if we can identify if um, underscore eight was executed. Mm -hmm, it sure was. Um, so there might be some you know activity associated with this that we could look at, uh, perhaps down here in the network activity. Uh, perhaps not though, uh, but you can see that if it it did if it had exhibited some network activity, we would oh yeah there it is actually. Um, so Superstation City. So perhaps it's another downloader. And now we could look at the URL house. No, I'm not a bot. Not today, anyway. Hmm, and it's not there. Um, so, you know, uh, that's now something that uh, I guess I could use for uh, my own. Oh, I see, because it's a 404 not found. So that's why it's not there. Um, so, you know, we could run into a dead end here. But uh, the point is that, you know, we could begin to investigate all of these additional payloads, particularly the ones that weren't as readily identif identified as, as some of the others. Um, what about the rest of the artifacts? Right, we have some DLLs. Uh, these do look like their their actual libraries, libcurl, libcurl, libgcc. Um, and, uh, but we don't know 100%, at least not at this point. I don't feel confident saying that 100%. Um, I do know, of course, that setup install is the next, well, it's, it's what's responsible for orchestrating everything. This is, this is no mixer itself. And that is a PE file. That's no surprise. But what we maybe don't know yet is much else. So detect it easy. This is where the AS, this is where the AS pack detection comes into play. So it identified that as AS pack which means that if we wanted to investigate that one further, first step is to unpack unpack the sample. So um, we'll do that in the next video. Um, hopefully, though, this was helpful just in dealing with some of the self-extracting archives like NSIS and 7-Zip, although they're, they're relatively straightforward. Um, at least once you've seen them, they're relatively straightforward. Sometimes when you haven't, it's not always clear exactly how you should approach those. And, uh, and then, you know, just some of the analysis that I do around investigating these. Uh, not everything will lead to a concrete piece of evidence. Not everything will lead to a clear detection or a clear result. And that's just sort of the unfortunate nature of this. But there's plenty here that we could dig into. And, of course, that's the other challenge is, is which rabbit holes do you go down. So, anyways, we'll tackle the next stage here in the next video. I hope to see you then.